Hi, today is December the 4th. We are answering those questions. Who am I? Who is God? What the heck are we doing together? You know, sometimes things happen and we don't plan it and it causes a problem, but we have to fix it. And last night I had a visitor in my house. The storm brought a squirrel into my, uh, it's, it's my first floor, but it acts like a basement also. And it also has, you know, bedrooms and all kinds of junk, really. And I was upstairs and thinking, whoa, did somebody come in downstairs? And I went down and checked. Nope. And then I heard a noise again and I went down and checked and I couldn't see anything. And I went down again. I couldn't see anything. And then I found it because... Uh, when I was looking in my bedroom, in my bedroom window, there it was. And it was, it had destroyed my window trying to get out. And, you know, that is a natural example of what happens sometimes in the spiritual. Sometimes there's a spiritual a force that comes into our lives, an unclean spirit. It wreaks havoc and we don't even know what's causing it. There are symptoms and there are signs, but it, uh, you know, it, it, we just, we just don't know. But as soon as it gets revealed and then we can take care of it. So my son and his best friend, my adopted son, Alex and Brent came and saved me, um, and helped me to be at peace knowing that I did take care of it, but it was, it was quite a force before I was free of that, um, that presence in my house. And sometimes that's a battle. It's a battle between the clean spirit, the Holy Spirit and unclean spirits, the spirits of the enemy and demons and uh, Jesus called them unclean spirits. There is a fight going on and sometimes a real mess until Jesus helps us to uh, see what's inside of us and get rid of it. In the, and we are going to read today about two forces that are coming into a fight, two spiritual forces, the forces that we can't see but we can see the effects and we can uh, we can experience the damage of the unclean spirits and the spirit of the enemy of God and the enemy of our soul and the Holy Spirit I can also feel the Holy Spirit this morning I felt his peace and his uh, his presence and I felt it physically even though it was spiritual and it seems crazy but I dare you. Try it. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill your heart and life and be free of every other spirit that does not belong to you or to God. It doesn't belong in your house. That squirrel did not belong in my house. And I was determined to get it out. As soon as I knew it was there, it was going. It was leaving. And I really thank God and my, and my people for helping. So we are going to refer to Daniel chapter 11 verse 36 through chapter 12 verse 13, first John chapter 4 1 through 21, Psalm 123 1 through 4, Proverbs chapter 29, 2 and 4 in the Old Testament. Daniel is seeing a vision. It is a prophecy of the last days, the end time, the end of the church age. And he is describing a king, and he says in verse 36, this king will do as he pleases. Isn't that the spirit of this age? It is an anti-Christ, anti-God, anti-Bible spirit to just do what you please. You've got in, in the Bible, in God's plan, in God's kingdom, you have got to do what you're told. You have got to act responsibly. You've got to... Not be about you, but somebody who does as he pleases is all about himself, exalting himself, claiming to be greater than every God, even blaspheming the God of gods. 
and that is our God, God of gods. He will succeed, but only until the time of wrath is completed. So it's part of God's plan. For what has been determined will surely take place. He will have no respect for the God of his ancestors or for the God loved by women or for any other God. For he will boast that he is greater than them all. And I think if you read another translation, you'll hear a little bit different uh, description of this man and king. And uh, I encourage you to read other translations. And then it, down in 42, he will conquer many countries. Even Egypt will not escape. He will gain control over the gold, silver, and treasures of Egypt and the Libyans and Ethiopians will be his servants. So he is going to rule. Superpower of this world. But there's that three-letter word that turns everything 180 degrees. Then news from the east and north will alarm him, and he will set out in great anger to destroy and obliterate many. He will stop between the glorious holy mountain and the sea and will pitch his royal tents. But while he is there, his time will suddenly run out and no one will help him. At that time, Michael, the archangel, who stands guard over your nation, will arise. Then there will be a time of anguish greater than any since nations first came into existence. We, can, we talk about this time as the great tribulation. But at that time... Every one of your people whose name is written in the book will be rescued. Many of those whose bodies lie dead and buried will rise up, some to everlasting life and some to shame. Now let's stop and think about that. This is our relationship. When we die, some will rise to everlasting life. Think about that. Everlasting life. And not just life like we experience it here on earth. But life in a place that is unimaginable. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart can understand and comprehend what God has prepared for those who love him. We're going to everlasting life to be with God forever. But there is the other side. Some will rise to shame and everlasting disgrace. Those who are wise will shine as bright as the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. But you, Daniel, keep this prophecy a secret. Seal up the book until the time of the end, when many will rush here and there, and knowledge will increase. Does that describe our nations today and our world? Many will rush here and there, and knowledge will increase. And then down in verse 8, so I ask, how will all this finally end, my Lord? But he said, go now, Daniel, for what I have said is kept secret and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, cleansed, and refined by these trials. That's the whole point of the tribulation is to turn the heart's of God's people toward him. But the wicked will continue in their wickedness and none of them will understand. Only those who are wise will know what it means. As for you, go your way until the end. You will rest and then at the end of the days, you will rise again to receive the inheritance set aside for you. There is an inheritance set aside for us. The New Testament, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 21, and my current Sunday school teacher, Greg, is doing an amazing job going verse by verse in 1 John. I recommend that you read this little book over and over and over again. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal his love to you and himself. Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the spirit they have comes from God. This is how we know if they have the spirit of God. That's the Holy Spirit, capital letters. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the spirit of God. 
So this is a truth that must be proclaimed. Jesus Christ came in a human body. He was God. He laid his God powers, so to speak, down. And he took off his coat, his wardrobe of Godness. And he came and he lived just like you and me. He came and he submitted to being a baby, dependent on a mother, a human mother. And he was a child submitting to his parents. And at some point in time, he realized that he was the son of God because he didn't have a father. His, the man that he was living with, Joseph, was not his father. At some point in time, he began to realize the truth. Okay, Joseph, the man, is not my father. Who is? And then he knew God was his father. And he lived with the power of the Holy Spirit. And what he did in the body was by the power of the Holy Spirit living in him as an example to us. If someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. And pay attention to this because there are many, um, at least a few, there's one very large religion that claims that they know the one and only God, but they do not know Jesus Christ as God and man in one. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over these people. Because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. That's why we have to follow the spirit and hear what he's saying and then do what he tells us to do. We belong to God and those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth, that's our God, spirit of truth, or the spirit of deception. Just like that squirrel that was running and making a horrible, horrible mess and destroying my house. It's a spirit of deception. There is a spirit of deception that is prevalent in this world today. But the spirit of truth will cast out that spirit of deception. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God for God is love. That's our God. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. God loves me. Jesus loves me. And he sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. How much does he have to prove that he loves us? Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. And John was saying, I have seen with my own eyes this Jesus. And God is love. And all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. So we're not going to be afraid when we go into his presence. We're going to face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows we have not fully experienced his perfect love. We love each other because he first loved us. And if we say we love God, but we don't love the people, our brothers, our Christian brothers, then we're, we're not telling the truth. Psalm 123 verses 1 through 4, I lift up my eyes to you. O God, enthroned in heaven. Our God is enthroned in heaven. He is enthroned in heaven. We keep looking to the Lord, our God, for his mercy, just as servants keep their eyes on their master. I want you to share these videos so God's word may be heard. 
Have an absolutely blessed day. And don't forget, the king is coming.